Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be doing the Romance Journey book tag. Happy Valentine's Day everybody. By the time I'm posting this, it will be Valentine's Day, the day of love. Every day should be filled with love, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm really excited to do this video today. This is the Romance Journey book tag. This was all put together by Becky over at Bex Reads. I'm going to be tagging her as well as everyone else I'm going to be mentioning down below. So she reached out to other booktubers in the community and asked us to be a part of this book tag. Becky reached out to nine other people, so 10 questions including herself. So each person submitted a question to Becky to put on this romance journey book tag. So these are questions that you would ask a romance reader about their experience as a romance reader. It will make more sense when I get into the questions, but these questions are just for romance readers to get to know them and to maybe get some recommendations from them as well and to just know more about them as a reader, specifically a romance reader. I'm going to be linking all of the questions down below as well as the people who contributed to this tag and I'll also mention who asked who asked each question, who created each question for this tag. The first question for this tag was created by Becky. She asked, how old were you when you started reading romance? And do you remember the first romance you read? I don't actually remember my first adult romance novel. I have no idea what it would have been, but I will say the series in the book that got me into the romance genre, even though it is YA, is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. This series sparked my love for <laughs> reading about people falling in love with each other. I was obsessed with Bella and Edward. I have a whole entire section of my bookshelf that is just dedicated to this book and the many editions that I have, the graphic novels I have of it, the illustrator guide, the signed editions I have of these books. Like I full on toy heart, not gonna lie. So um, these books were a total contributor to my love of romance novels, mainly because Bella and Edward were the main reason why I loved these books. Like their romance story fed my romance loving heart even before I knew I was a romance reader. But when I think about an actual romance book, I believe the first actual romance books I ever read, even though I don't like saying that they're romance books, are books by Nicholas Sparks. As a seasoned romance reader, <laughs> I can now say that Nicholas Sparks is not a romance writer. Oh, if you hear something in the background, my dad is using a power tool outside. I apologize. <laughs> Anyway, that's what happens when you when you uh, still live with people. <laughs> so anyway, um, Nicholas Sparks, he now I know is not an actual like romance writer. If you don't know romance books, the two requirements that you need for a book to be a romance book is that the romance has to be the center part of the whole entire novel and there has to be a happy ending. And many other readers will testify if they've read Nicholas Sparks books. Um, a lot of his books don't end in a happily ever after or an HEA. So I do not deem Nicholas Sparks a romance writer. Back then, I thought he was because back when I was in middle school in 2010, 2012, like, what did I have to choose from? You know, like at a Barnes and Noble, um, I mainly read his books because his movies were out like the movies based on the books and so i remember loving a walk to remember even though that is not a romance book it is not <laughs> based off of the two um qualifications i just gave that is not a romance book i did not know that i thought that this was a romance book um and then i was also really in love with safe haven because i loved the movie i I think I liked the movie better than the book. I don't recall, um, but I remember I still have, or maybe I don't, I might have hold it. I don't remember because I don't own any of his books anymore or maybe they're in a box in the attic somewhere. Um, I do have like the movie version of Safe Haven. And so I really, really was into Safe Haven, um, the movie. And then I really wanted to read the book because of it. And then um, I of course read Dear John <laughs> by Nicholas Sparks. So two out of the three books I just mentioned, don't end in an ATA. So I don't deem Nicholas Sparks as a romance writer. Um, however, his books sparked me to find actual romance books, you know? But I don't remember the first specific romance book I ever read. 
<laughs> I don't. I have a really bad memory. Question number two is from Crystal, which is, did you deliberately seek out romances or did you stumble upon it and how? Yes and no, kind of what I said. Nicholas Sparks movies, I kind of stumbled upon them, which made me want to seek out his books. And then that led me to want to read more romances. You know, so kind of yes and no to this question. Question number three is from Kelsey, which is, did you start with traditionally published or indie books um, and has it switched? So that's a great question. Um, I started reading traditionally published books. Um, I was really into Nicholas Sparks. Again, not a romance writer though, but Nicholas Sparks was something I could buy off the shelves that my mother would not be um, like questioning because of the cover, <laughs> whether or not I should buy that. <laughs> Um, when I was a kid. So I did get into Colleen Hoover. So that's traditionally published. She's one of the first like romance authors that I've read from. And then again, I don't necessarily know if Colleen Hoover is deemed a romance writer because of the ending of some of her books. But I do remember the first book I ever picked up by Colleen Hoover was November 9. And that is because I used to be a big YA reader and I watched a lot of YA booktube, specifically Christine from Paul and Bananas book, Christine Riccio. I would watch her videos and one day I watched her talking about Colleen Hoover and specifically this book and that it was coming out soon and she read the arc and it was really good and I was like, oh, okay, I have to get that. I put it on my Christmas wish list the year this came out, which was 20, 2015? Yes, 2015. And I got it for Christmas and read it and was obsessed with it. And I'll come back to this book another time, like in another question, because this is going to be relevant for another question. So um, I do remember that trying to go more into the Barnes and Noble romance section when I started in high school, you know, um, when I started actually reading romances, romances in high school. But I was a shy girl who thought I'd get judged for reading romance books or going in the shelves for reading romances. So, and so it took me a while to actually get into the traditional publishing or even any published romance books that weren't online, you know? But nowadays it has switched. I mostly read indie books. Most of the books you see behind me are indie, but I'm not opposed to reading traditionally published specifically from like favorite authors of mine. And then I'll occasionally go through Barnes and Noble and pick up a book that catches my eye. But I mainly read indie because I mainly read off of Kindle Unlimited. So question number four is from Jess, which is what was a romance trope you were afraid to try but ended up loving? I would say probably like alpha heroes or bully romances. Now bully romances, there's like very few that I actually like. So take with that what you will, but definitely alpha heroes. I'm more of a person who loves like a sweet, caring man, like very sweet and kind. <laughs> and so um, alpha heroes were kind of intimidating to me because that's not really what I like want in real life. Um, but uh, there are romances that have alpha heroes in them that I absolutely adore. Examples of that would definitely be Sophie Lark's books like Stolen Air has that, Brutal Prince has that. So there are alpha heroes that I love, but I was definitely hesitant to pick up alpha hero books. Question number five is from Caitlin, and she wants to know, is there a romance book you read early on in your journey that you would rate differently today? First off, Nicholas Sparks books, okay? I just wanna get that out of the way <laughs> so we can stop talking about Nicholas Sparks, but definitely Nicholas Sparks. And I'm coming back to November 9th by Colleen Hoover. This is one of the first romances I ever read. And um, I've only read it, I think once, I think I maybe read it like back to back to back to back in like the same year in 2015. Looking back on this, <laughs> um, I definitely would probably rate this differently based on also personal experience because the heroine in here, Fallon, she deals with a lot based off of other people's scrutiny because she has some disabilities and she was in a fire and has a, a facial scar and people treat her very differently and back then my disability or chronic illness was not flared to the point that it is today and I think I would view this book differently probably would not love it as much and then I also know that the hero in here I don't like secret keeping I don't like heroes that lie that keep secrets and I don't think it is dual POV but you never know the secret he's keeping no it is dual POV never mind but you never know the secret that he's keeping this whole time and that really grinds on my gears like I don't like that so um I definitely think I would rate this book differently I'm also changing my thoughts on Colleen Hoover as well like that has changed I've even 
on hold many of her books. So question number six is from Brie and she wants to know, how has your taste in romance evolved over the years? Um, this is a great question. Uh, my main point in this is that uh, I am now less scared to try new things. I remember when I first started reading Ice Planet Barbarians or Alien Romances, whatever, um, I was scared to put it on Goodreads. I was just scared to be proud of some of the romances that I love so much because of what other people would think of me. And so I love how now, after the many years that I've been reading romance, I can gush about the books that I love and not be scared to. And I'm also less scared to try new things. I think I was kind of scared to try out certain tropes or certain subgenres, but now I just, I wanna know more. I wanna, I wanna be like a very seasoned romance reader that reads like anything and everything. Like I want to be that type of person. Like I don't want to be pigeonholed into one genre. I don't want to only read contemporary romance. Like for me, I would be so bored only reading contemporary romance or only reading historical romance or only reading alien romance. Like I feel like that's boring. Like I want to diversify myself and I definitely have and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Next question is from Kehlani. This question is what is the most powerful romance that you have read that left a lasting impact? I have two that I need to mention because I'm not that person that can just pick one book <laughs> for a question. The two that I'm gonna mention are both ones that are highly emotional, so please be aware of that, but they end in an HEA. Specifically, we have the Full Tilt Duet by Emma Scott. You have to read the duet to get the happy ending, just so you know. Please don't read just book one. You have to read book two. I know a lot of people read book one and are like, I'm not, I'm done. I'm done. I'm like, no, you gotta, you gotta book two, okay? This is also a romance book that I didn't think I would love because the heroine in here, Casey, is someone I didn't think I would like because she is a rock star who does not think good of herself. Like she, she couldn't care less if she wound up on the side of the road in a ditch. Like she does not take care of herself. And it was really hard to read about her. And so her romance story in this duet, I fell in love. And the duet itself, left such a powerful impact on me. And the other one will probably be no surprise to my booktube friends. This is The Silent Waters by Brittany Cherry. Um, this one, one of the most epic, memorable romances I've ever read in my life. This is the romance between Maggie and Brooks and um, Maggie ends up becoming the stepsister to Brooks's best friend. So um, Maggie's stepbrother is Brooks's best friend. Anyway, um, they grew up together as kids um, and Maggie's always been in love with Brooks, um, but then something happens one day that traumatizes her and she has not spoken since that point. This book takes place in chunks like when they're kids, when they're young adults, when they're full adults, um, and just their romance story. It is truly epic. I love this one so much and it's one of my favorite books of all time for a reason. Question number eight is from Jackie. Uh, what was the romance book that told you this is what I'm looking for in my personal life and or partner? Definitely Always Only You by Chloe Lise because of Ren Bergman on here. Ren Bergman is my dream man. <laughs> he is who I picture when I think about the perfect man for me. It's Ren Bergman. I think one of the main reasons why I admire him so much and strive to find a man in life that is like Ren Bergman is because of how he is with Frankie. Frankie has a chronic illness in here and the way that he loves on her and knows that nothing is wrong with her and just cares for her so deeply. I'm someone who really appreciates caretaking and Ren Bergman is perfect at that. And he is just so sweet and kind and patient, like so patient. I love, love a patient man. And so this man is everything to me. I want a man just like him. If I could just like ask Chloe Lee's to like put him in like a real man's body and then that'll be, that'll be my future husband. By all means, I'll take it. <laughs> question number nine is my question. And I would love to know which romance books or book would you recommend to a romance newbie and a seasoned romance reader. This question can be interpreted, I think like two ways, like what's one romance book that you think both a seasoned romance reader would like and a newbie would like. And then you could also view it as what are some books a newbie would like and then what are some books a seasoned 
romance reader would like. Um, so I'm going with like the second option. I'm going to leave, I'm going to tell you a few romance books I think you should read if you're like a newbie romance reader and then give you a few options if you are a seasoned romance reader that are kind of like under hyped. For newbies, if you're a new romance reader and you really want to get into paranormal romance, I really recommend Cressley Cole's books, specifically um, the Immortals After Dark series. Book one is A Hunger Like No Other. These paranormal romance books are fantastic. If you, I feel like a lot of romance readers get introduced into the romance genre because of fantasy romance. These books have a lot of the same vibes. You have faded mates, like if you love Faded Mates and you have not read this series yet, you are doing a huge disservice to yourself when you are because these romances are so epic, specifically because of the Faded Romance, Faded Mate aspect in here. Each book in the series is about a different lore creature finding their mate. So for example, this one is about a Lyke who's like a werewolf creature um, finding his mate who is a half Valkyrie, half vampire, and he is devastated and so upset because I think vampires and... Um, Vampires and werewolves are like sworn enemies. So he's so devastated that his fate mate is a vampire and he cannot believe it. Um, but he definitely falls in love with her, obviously. So I love so many of these books in the series. Almost every single book in the series is five stars for me because they are that good. So if you really wanna get into paranormal romance, you have to read the Immortals After Dark series. If you're wanting to read a contemporary romance book, definitely pick up Talia Hibbert's books. I will be her ultimate cheerleader for the rest of time. The Brown Sister series, I feel like is a great starting point for getting into her books. Um, this is the first one, Get a Life Chloe Brown. As you can tell, it's very well loved because I love this one so much. This one is kind of like A Corpy Sunshine. The heroine is the girl, but the hero is the sunshine. And they have to complete like a bucket list together, even though they don't really like each other. I love this one. It has amazing chronic illness representation. Talia Hibbert is also someone that you can go to if you want to read a lot of diverse characters in your books. I adore her so much and more people need to read her, obviously. If you want to get into sci-fi or alien romances, I have to mention Ruby Dixon, obviously. Like, I, I can't go through this video without talking about her because she's one of the main reasons why I love alien romances so much. I, I love her so much, like her writing. I have not been able to find alien romances that compete with her books besides maybe Zoe Draven's series because that one is really good too. So like Zoe Draven and R Ruby Dixon are my two top like alien romance authors because like they're so fantastic. And so Ruby Dixon is definitely someone I would recommend if you want to get into the sci-fi or alien romance genre. Uh, I know some people don't really prefer this series. Some people either love IPV, the Ice Planet Barbarian series, or they love the um, her dragon books. These ones are really good too. They're post-apocalyptic dragon shifter books with faded mates in them. I know people love those as well. So, um, and she also has some fantasy romance books. So just DM me on Instagram if you want to know more about, <laughs> about Ruby's books and where a good starting point is if you don't want to read IPVs. For the seasoned romance reader, I definitely want to recommend a fantasy romance. <laughs> so I know some people might not read this book because of the cover. I think the cover is iconic. Okay, I love it. Um, and I can't believe more people haven't read this book, but definitely this is not for someone who has never read a fantasy romance book before because it goes into a, a lot, like it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. There's a lot of world building. There's a lot of information with fantasy romance stuff. So please be aware of that, especially like the fantasy aspect because these books, C.L. Wilson's books are very heavy on fantasy and romance. She's one of those authors I love that is very, very good at interweaving the correct amount of fantasy, like equal amount of fantasy and romance. So The Winter King by C.O. Wilson is one more people need to read and I feel like would be better suited for a seasoned romance reader. This is an arranged marriage, kind of arranged marriage. The hero doesn't know that he's marrying this woman. Like he's supposed to marry another woman, but she's that woman in disguise. And um, he is a winter king, he has winter powers, she has storm powers they get married. He doesn't realize that he married the wrong woman until after they've consummated the marriage. And um, he's stuck with this woman and they don't get along. They are, it's amazing banter. And these two fall in love. It's honestly beautiful. I love this couple so much. C.L. Wilson is specifically, if you want to get more into fantasy romance, I definitely recommend her books. But this is definitely geared towards more the like person who is more familiar with fantasy book specifically. A contemporary one that I'd love to mention is more on the darker end. This is It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. I do not recommend 
a romance newbie to start out with this book because you might be scarred. <laughs> I feel like this is a lot <laughs> to like throw like a little baby newbie into this book because it gets very dark at times. This is the romance between Salome and Styx and um, he ends up saving her when she escapes her cult and um, kind of nurses her back to health. But Styx is very much known as the silent brooding man. Um, he is the head of his motorcycle club and he also doesn't speak because he has a stutter and he's very self-conscious about his stutter. So he doesn't normally talk out loud. So he communicates through sign language and the two of them fall in love. They have a little bit of a backstory before that point. So this just gets dark at times. So I, I love this book. I appreciate this book. It's such a good book, but I don't think it's geared towards newbies because I don't want to scare people off. The last question for this tag is from Sam and she wants to know, in your eyes, what are three perfect romances? So I have four. I couldn't, I couldn't pick three. Okay. First is an obvious one. If you are not new to my channel, Radiance by Grace Draven. It's perfect to me. I know that a lot of my friends actually don't like this book <laughs> and that's okay. People like different things, but to me, this romance is perfect. I love it so much. I could reread this book to the end of time and be perfectly happy. Um, This is the romance between Ildico and Brishan. It's a fantasy romance, friends to lovers and arranged marriage. I love it so much. Royally Matched by Emma Chase is another one that I could not find any fault in, even though I don't like. I actively dislike um, romances that deal with dating shows, like reality TV. Go away from me, like get as far away from me as possible. This is a book that is top five favorite books of all time for me. I love Henry and Sarah in here. They are one of the like perfect couples I've ever read about ever in my life. I love them so much. So Prince Henry here is on this reality dating show like filming it to find his princess um he's not actually gonna find his princess he's just trying to have some fun um but one of the contestants brings her sister along to just spend time with her when they're not filming her name is sarah and he ends up falling in love with sarah who's not on the show and i adore this romance so much and it is beautiful it's perfect a novella that i love to mention that i think is absolutely stunning absolutely perfect is the king spinster bride by ruby dixon it's everything. It's amazing. This is about a woman who is a princess. She ends up saving this little boy's life. Her, her father, who was a king, ended up kidnapping a neighboring kingdom's prince, like his son. The heroine of this book protected that boy while their kingdom was being um, like taken over. And it's years later, that little boy has now grown up into a man. So it's a little bit of an age gap where the heroine is the older one. And he goes to seek out the woman who saved his life and he wants her to be his uh his queen and i i love this one it's so good it's so slept on people need to read it and i of course just quickly want to mention a court of mist and fury by sarah g mass because this book is perfect to me <laughs> it's so good the couple in here i don't want to spoil it so i'll just say the couple in here one of the most perfect love stories i've ever read about ever in my entire life and their journey in this book makes me cry like even just thinking about them because they are fantastic they deserve the entire world and this book is just perfection i'm going to actually tag a few people i never really tag anyone um but i thought this would be really fun for people to do so i'm going to be tagging victoria over at victoria's romance reads rachel from rachel reads and sings and mckay from oh hey it's mckay and if you want to do this tag by all means consider yourself tagged i would love to know anyone's answers to these questions let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the open open book emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all